This is 9.2 on climate change continued, and we're going to talk about the effects of climate change. So as the amount of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases is increased, we've also seen an increase of the global average temperature. Now, the way to read this graph is zero is, you know, what's normal for our planet, um, what's normal for the, the time frame that we're looking at. Based on all the other factors of effective climate in the years, what can we expect? Um, and then negative number would mean below the average, and then positive, of course, above the average. So at 2020, we're set at about a d one degree um, Celsius higher than normal. Now, okay, for one, if you're used to thinking Fahrenheit, that doesn't sound like a lot at all. And then even if you are, like, seeing Fahrenheit's this slightly larger number, you might be like, that's not that much. Why are we freaking out? So again, this is the average. So if you add up and do the, the whole mean of all the, the areas in the world, um, what their, what their average is together, it takes a lot of change to see that much of an increase of, um, of the average. So you kind of think about it like there's 150 students that took this this test or something and they got an average score. Um, in order for the entire class to increase, you have to see a lot of different changes in all the different students. Not all students would necessarily be doing better or like getting higher, some might be lower, it's against the average. That's why we see that not everywhere is hotter. Um, some places might be cooler, but we've seen so much of an increase in um, in local averages that's added up to a significantly higher global average. Um, and this, again, is still really high. If we see like something like three or four degrees Celsius, higher above than normal, that's a catastrophe we can't come back from. So in all the talks about curbing uh, global warming, they're you know, trying to stop at like 1.5 degrees Celsius or like maybe 2 degrees Celsius, but the closer, the smaller we can get that number, the less damaging the long-term effects from this will be. Alright, so as we see this global increase of average temperature, that changes the temperature of the air and the water. Uh, this is all important to the circulation of, of water around the planet um, and ocean currents as well. So all of this is responsible for taking heat and water moving around the world. That affects local precipitation, local temperatures. Um, so if it's affecting circulation, it's affecting the local climates. Some places will get colder, other places may have gotten warmer. Um, some places flood, other experience droughts. So it's not all the same. The fact, or like what's important is that they're experiencing differences that are, that area is not adjusted to in a very short amount of time. Uh, so this is just a picture showing um, circulation of water around the world and heat as a result. Um, so one thing I want to point out is uh, the Gulf Mexico, uh, the Gulf Stream. Here we go. Um, so we see like the, the the warm water travels upwards, cools down, and then travels downwards. And so it's like pushing and pulling on all this water. So as we see um, more heat being absorbed by the pools, um, the and like all this ice being being melted, we're seeing the this water warm up. So there's not as much of a a difference between the, the two sets of water um, and that we can see uh, will cause the Gulf Stream to slow down and then it's not bringing as much heat from the equator as it would normally. So with uh, a breakdown of this current or even a slowdown of this current, we actually see Europe gets a lot more, uh, a lot colder. So again, going back to that not every place is going to get warmer, Global warming is just one aspect of climate change. Um, climate change just means the temperature and precipitation patterns for a region has changed. Um, so as we see this change in climate, this also affects the crops that can be grown, 
leading to a loss of agriculture or a shift to a different crop that maybe that area is not adjusted to. Um, it affects, and put this in there, but affects like what um, animals thrive in a certain area. So um, if you're relying on a certain animal like as a pollinator um, or a source of food, that's affected as well. The ice melt does contribute to sea level rise. A bigger thing uh, you want to know with the ice melt is that it causes this positive feedback loop. Well, a positive feedback loop is one where uh, like A causes B, and then B causes more of A to happen, which causes more of B to happen. So it kind of cascades out of control. So as the permafrost melts, the, the surface is darker, and darker surfaces absorb more heat than lighter surfaces. Lighter surfaces will reflect that light, so they won't absorb as much of that heat. Well, as this permafrost melts, it becomes darker and absorbs more heat. Um, it causes then for the ice to melt even more. And there is little bubbles of methane trapped in this ice and in this permafrost. And then as that as it melts, it releases this methane. Methane, remember, is a really potent greenhouse gas. So it causes more heat to be trapped. And then just again, the self-perpetuating cycle. Um, as ice melts, we also see a decrease of habitat and food availability for polar species. You know, you've all seen a sad picture of a polar bear on an iceberg. So sad. Um, with sea level rise, that's primarily for the thermal expansion of water. Um, not just from the ice melt, but ice melt does have a pretty substantial impact as well. But the bigger thing is the expansion of water. So as molecules heat up, they get more energy and they spread out. So if you imagine an entire ocean of little molecules trying to spread out from each other, that's um, very significant. This displaces coastal communities. Um, so if you know, you're poor um, and you can't just easily move inland, um, maybe you're dependent on a farm that's been there for for decades, and now it's being constantly flooded. Um, like, what are you what are you gonna do? And this is a reality for hundreds of thousands of people around the world. Um, so this is a really big deal. Um, the effect of the marine ecosystems is kind of split, so it can create some habitats, but then uh, displace other habitats. So really just depends, but it definitely affects human habitats. Uh, the oceans are pretty amazing. So they are able to absorb so much heat. So based on the amount of carbon dioxide we have, if we didn't have an ocean, we'd be super fried by now. Uh, but it's um, the ocean that absorbs so much of that heat and also a lot of the carbon dioxide, but then that has an impact on the ocean. So because it's absorbing so much heat, it becomes much warmer. So we see the sea level rise. Um, that also leads to coral bleaching. It can exasperate uh, algae blooms, lead to loss of fisheries. Uh, warmer water also holds less oxygen. So then with less dissolved oxygen, we have less of the organisms that depend on that oxygen. But also carbon dioxide becomes carbonic acid in water. And carbonic acid uh, lowers the pH of the ocean. And so you've seen ocean acidification occur and that, uh, like any animals that, you know, have some sort of shelled exterior that puts them at, in, in damage. Because if you've ever, you know, put like a limestone rock and some vinegar, it's basically the same thing. Um, and so they can't build their shells as well, and that makes them more vulnerable. Okay, so there's a lot going on here, but this just summarizes all the different ways that humans are impacted by the major events from climate change. So climate change, we see rising temperatures, more extreme weather, so more, um, more hurricanes, for, for example. We see sea level rising, um, carbon dioxide, concentrations increasing. Um, so that's all going to cause a certain thing that has more impacts on humans. So I'm not going to spend more time than that because you can pause and read it if you'd like. All right, last part I want to talk about are misconceptions. The first uh, is the idea that 
some people have it's the, the temperature of the sun getting hotter and so that's why we have more heat on the earth it's actually not the case because so for as long as we've been able to measure the the radiation coming from the sun um, it for a long time it did have that the same kind of pattern where the decreased we see the temperature decrease increase we see the temperature increase as well but now we've actually seen the sun the solar radiation has actually gone down a bit however we are still increasing in temperature so this this wouldn't happen if this was the cause of this we would see them both go up it's not part of the natural cycle so for um, this is what the cycle should look like so this is basically showing um, carbon dioxide and other things that, are, that affect the climate and then the resulting climate. So the carbon dioxide level is way above what's normal and the temperature anomaly is it also not where it should be. In fact, based on where we are, sort of like our orbit and our tilt, we should actually be in a cooling period, but we're not. Um, it is because of humans, if you run simulations on all the natural factors, so solar, and then a whole bunch of other stuff that you can research, volcanic activity, those sorts of things, and then compare it with anthropogenic plus natural. So add in what we've done, uh, the observations based on what we've actually seen with the, the temperature anomaly, um, it matches the anthropogenic one to human cause, then what we would see if it was just the natural causes. There is a disagreement. Multiple scientific institutions around the world have come to the same conclusions. Um, there's no disagreement. <laughs> Climate change is a thing. Um, and then one last thing I just wanted to clarify because it can get confusing. Ozone depletion does not cause global warming. So there are two issues that get talked about because they're in the same unit because they're so similar because they happen in some of the places, but they are different issues. Um, so to figure this out, you had to go back to um, the different types of radiation coming from the sun. If you have, look at the entire spectrum, it's got visible lights, you know, the colors, it's got UV light, it's got infrared light. So the part that the ozone layer is obstructing is the UV radiation. It takes away some of the UV radiation, lets pass some, um, the UVA and some UVB, but then it still lets invis or visible light and infrared light through. Its only thing is the UV radiation. So as the, UV the ozone layer is depleted, more UV radiation gets in. Having more greenhouse gases down here in the troposphere, so by the way, entirely different, and this is all of like life as we know it down here, all of the weather, all the stuff down here. The increase of greenhouse gases traps in more infrared radiation making the troposphere warmer it does not affect the stratosphere the stratosphere is not affecting the troposphere like in that sense so there are different issues uh, the way you can think about it is if you put a whole bunch of blankets on you get warm if you keep on putting on blankets for instance for example as we are increasing the amount of carbon dioxide you're going to get sweat like more warm and sweat more, but all that heat's not rating your DNA and giving you skin cancer. So they're different issues. If you had a higher exposure to UV radiation, yes, that would give you skin cancer, but that's not the case. All right, for more information, which I know sounds impossible because it took two videos to get through all this, um, I would recommend visiting these sources. Um, this is as much detail as I try to go in. There's still a lot more detail that I could go into, but I will let you do your own research to, to see all that. <sighs> all right, the end.